What a day to be alive. Welcome to Rise Up With Rick. We are passionate about helping you extract the most out of every day and exploring and enhancing all things physical, mental and emotional well-being and performance. We are brought to you by runners.com. That's R-U-N-N-E-Z.com as well as rickmirabella.com. Radio, let's launch now. Ah, welcome to Rise Up with Rick. I tell you what, my guest today, he's a, he's a previous guest, the great man. He's a Melbourneian. He's the Hungarian heartthrob. He's a rock star. He's done it all. But now he's just fully invested in helping humans live the most magnificent, active, productive, happy, healthy lives that he possibly can. I welcome Tommy Kendi. Hey, you going, Ricky? Woohoo! Mate. Have you got um have you got the claps in the background rolling or not yet? Uh we'll have to get the producer onto that. We've had a had a bit of help with the podcast over the journey. <clears throat> and that is not my repertoire, great man. I know you are the magnificent um podcast that is Tommy Kil- Tommy Kennedy Unfiltered. Um, That's me. We'll put uh in the show notes, of course. I've been loving catching up on a few of these. Of course, I'm a subscriber and of course I I down, they get downloaded on my phone, but they're really good little nuggets. Like they're, the way you've done it, mate, 25 minutes, 30 minutes, then every now and then, like if you get a, an interview, it's a bit longer. But I love the way you just jump on. Um, yeah. The latest one, we might as well, I just love, we're just starting randomly, aren't we? But three mm. steps towards your soul truth. Loved it. Loved it talking about, um, you, can you go through that? Because I loved everything. Yeah. But it's really important Um when people start to look a bit inward and look at the, this kind of stuff, it doesn't, and it's not easy for people either. That's the thing. You've got to spend mm-hmm. a lot of time within yourself and going within. So to get us started there. That sounds like a good start. <laughs> get us started. Yeah, man. I mean, look, at the end of the day, I, I mean, I just believe we all put, when we go into this journey of looking within, it seems like such a, a big task and a big journey. And, you know, I, I feel like people – are so apprehensive about moving in to their to their true and authentic nature and the the funny thing is once you're on the journey of of looking within you realize it's not really uh, i mean it is a, a spiritual journey and all that type of stuff but it's there's it's there's no difference in going within and um and i don't know going to bloody going to gym it's it's the same sort of or playing footy or whatever going within it's exactly the same process yeah you're drawn towards something you're attracted towards something and you want to just find out about yourself you know and that's the key thing is like we're all rolling around life and things happen some are good some are bad some are beautiful some are ugly you know there's love hate annoyance this all the stuff in between and we as human beings, we just have to find a way to navigate ourselves through it. Cause all the shit stuff is still going to happen. All the good stuff is still going to happen. But once you, once you get this understanding, it once you get to know yourself a little bit more, you realize that most of the things are because you assume or you perceive them to be bad when they're not really bad after all. At the end of the day, all we're really doing is just, rolling along on this earth we're going around the sun 70 80 90 100 times and then we fucking die you know so we may as well experience all aspects of life and that's how i look at it mate yeah and it's it's sometimes it's people you put it very simply and you do it really well and we all struggle with different stuff and i reckon i've got to 40 and i all and i'm over 40 and i'm just starting to really feel into it the last five or six years had a lot of help. Obviously, my wife's very, very, very good at this, and I have I've had a lot of help. But it's amazing when you go inward and practice it. Like you said, you, you compare it to gym or footy or anything. It, it just takes practice, but it's no different. Um, and the more regularly you do it, you talk about your yoga and stuff in a minute, which I really genuinely love. You're not going to feel like doing it every time. It's like getting up for it's like we talk about running every day or or, or sports science or performance. But it's three minutes into it, you know it's the best possible thing for you and you know it's going to really help. So just looking inward so the, and really not, like you said, not not making a mountain out of a mold. Like 70, 80, 90 years we're here for, great. 
uh, we're little ants on this earth and in this mm. universe. Why make things harder than they should be? Um, it's just all truth. What, what, what do you mean by that? Tell the listeners. Well, I've listened to it. It's weird. Yeah, I mean, soul truth to me is I believe we have different layers of of truth within us, and at the the surface layer is the truth of, you know, I want a new car, I want money, I want this house, I want this type of girlfriend or this type of relationship, this type of boyfriend, whatever it might be. They're all they're not really soul truths because. I mean, it, probably most people listening or, you know, all of us, we know someone that's filthy fucking rich, right? Or we know a number of people that are incredibly wealthy and they have all the material things, but you, you know, some of them are happy and some of them aren't, but the ones that aren't happy, why aren't they happy if they have millions and millions in the bank? They've got the Porsches, the fucking big house, the double story, the pools, the place in Porti or bloody Spain or whatever, whatever else. Right. And how come they're not happy, you know, and what's the reason that they're not happy. And the reason is, and I'm not saying all of them are unhappy because not all of them are unhappy, but, but the ones that aren't, then that, that sort of shows that there has to be something deeper, you know? And so in terms of your soul truth, from the work that I've done with people over the last 12 to 15 years, our soul truth usually comes back to a handful of things. And I believe one of the key things up on right on top of that list is connection to other human beings, connection to nature, connection to ourself. And that's, that's real soul truth. You know, that's, that's where the real juice is. And the, the interesting thing I find is that people actually put a lot more energy into disconnecting from people blaming people and going yeah you did this and you did that and that takes us further away from connection you know and so ultimately our soul truth is what is it that we actually want to experience in ourselves? what what how do we want to feel what do we want to what do we want to experience i mean when we're seeing people i mean connecting to people and what what is it that we want to share in this world? Because ultimately, the the second thing is sharing your wisdom, sharing what you fucking love, and sharing it with others and sharing it with the world. And that's ultimately what's going to bring us happiness. <laughs> Just walk off on me. Just open the door for my dog, who's oh, oh. Giving, me, giving me the absolute shits. Out you go, Jips. <laughs> Out you go. Um, no, no, it's it's awesome, buddy. And that's the key. And the, the happiness, my biggest thing is like obviously what makes you happy um, and what gives you energy. Um, obviously that we do a lot of it for our running and, and movement and it doesn't have to be running. I've always said that. and um, It's really important just to tune into what gives you energy. And often it's family, being around people connected to you, community, movement, you said before we got on air that um, yoga and, and and just being with yourself, so you, you obviously took a set practice this morning and then you went straight to do your own practice because you just had to, otherwise you know that that's your day. Your day is set around that and these are your cornerstones and connection is a massive, massive part of it. Um, absolutely okay. love it. Um, you said something in this episode, I don't want to harp on this episode much longer, mm. but ego, tonic, ego, Egoic. E egoic. Yeah. Explain our, that more. Yeah. So our egoic truth, there's so there's a soul truth and a egoic truth. Sorry, I've got I've got my doggies going off here as well. Oh, uh, they must have hurt <laughs> each other. Yeah. Yeah, we, we look so good in our studios here. Oh, they're nice and quiet. No, we bloody dogs. That's oh, it. look at him there. What's what's <laughs> the name there? No, nah, it's Bailey. Wait, I'm gonna get... So now Tommy's gone off, listeners. So my gypsy's normally really good, my Australian shepherd. She sits at my feet. Gypsy's normally fantastic, but she must have got a bit. Must have been something going on out there. Who's that? Who's that? Sorry, that's uh, this is Daisy. Oh, get a Daisy. You're beautiful. <laughs> you are gorgeous. I've got um, I've got three of them with me. I'm we're ba we're dog sitting a couple, and I've got my one outside. So yeah, Jeez, you're ambitious to go through on a podcast. I love that. Yeah. Uh, now listen, 
So sorry. Yeah. So egoic. egoic. There's our egoic truth, and there's our um, there's our soul truth, right? And our our soul truth is what I was talking about before, which is what we actually want to experience, what we what we really want to, you know, like be in our heart and 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 experience those things. And then the egoic truth is the things that we think we need, like what society wants us to. Uh, well, what we believe our societal um, responsibilities are, which is the big house, the the money in the bank and, you know, the cars and the place in Portsy and wherever else, you know? And so that's the egoic truth. And even though what a lot of really wealthy people that are, that have looked internally within what, what I found when I've interviewed them or I've talked to them is they weren't chasing, they were moving towards their, their real, their soul truth. And as a byproduct of them being in their soul truth and sharing that with the world as a byproduct, they got a huge influx of financial reward of, you know, of the houses, the cars and all that type of stuff. But that wasn't what, what was driving them. You know, and this is the, that's the big clincher is that wherever, whenever we make a certain choice or we make a decision based on what we want to do, it's either going to come out of fear or it's going to come out of love, right? And when it comes out of fear, then even if we do achieve that goal, it's going to feel like shit at the end of it. You're going to feel empty at the end of it. If it comes from love, then there'll be a whole different journey towards that um, that goal or that choice or that end result. And so that's what I really work with when I work with, with my clients, like my coaching clients is we dig, it's like, what's your fucking real truth? You know, what is it? Like, what is it that, that, that makes your soul catch on fire? That's the shit that we want to find out. Not, Oh, I want to, I want another job that has double the money. Why? Like, why have, why have double the money? What's it going to do for you? You know, if you're not doing what you love to do and you're not sure. And you know what? I've had clients, coaching clients that realize, you know, two months into our program here or the little coaching program that they just basically want to go sit in a forest and get to know nature. And then they do it, you know, <laughs> and then they do it. And I see them six months later and they are glowing with happiness. So, Everyone has their own soul truth, but what what I find is uh, ultimately the the leap of faith is that when you're going towards your soul truth, you're always going to have to take a, a dive off at the un like you're going to have to take a dive where it's a very unknown, uncharted territory because you know that when you're in your soul truth, you're going to be going down a path that hasn't been walked down yet because it's your truth, right? It's your soul wanting to take that journey and it's uncharted territory. So you don't know what the steps are. Um, you can't, there's no one in the world that can tell you what they are. Only you know what they are. So you have to be able to trust your own message, that internal intuitive messaging. And that's the thing that I, that, that I found you know, after working with people for the last 10, 15 years is it's as soon as we get that intuitive guidance, we're immediately blocked by either society or by the ego or by our belief systems. And as soon as we're, we get to the initial block, we don't go any further. And that's a fucking crime because you, you should, every day there should be some leap of faith that you should be taking every day. So I try and make my days um, at least once a day for me to take a leap of faith. And that could just mean having an awkward conversation or that could just mean if I've been shoving shit under the carpet for, you know, months or years or whatever to lift up that carpet and have the conversation or, or, or do, or, or especially for blokes go and, you know, go to the doc, get your blood tests or do whatever it might be. You know, it's like all those little things that keep saying, Hey, get this done, get this done or go towards this. It's not going to stop. We've got to listen to it. And we've got to learn to listen to it. And once we do, that's when everything starts to open up. 
So obviously yoga for you, but you your main coaching service and your your premium service is phenomenal. Is this is this a big part of it? Like what you work with with the a lot of your clients and yeah, I mean, look, yoga, yoga for me, I mean, I still teach a few public classes and whatnot, but yoga for me, it's almost like it's, it's such a, it's such a, a, an important part of my life. And it has been ever since I began the journey of, of yoga, but ultimately the only reason I teach it is because I fucking love it. And I see how many people transform in classes, you know? And so I want to teach that, but ultimately my, yoga for me is, is almost like a, an introduction for people into what I really do, um, which is, and the, when I teach a yoga class, you know, there's 30, 40 people and then they, you know, search what else does Tommy do? And then they're like, oh, he's a, you know, coach as well. And then they come and we do coaching or whatever, or then I get into the corporate spaces and do some breath work and meditation and yoga and mindfulness stuff in there so it's like teaching yoga like public yoga classes for me is almost for people to, it's like an introduction yeah you know, that's where you know and then people jump onto my podcast and they listen to that so it's a, it's an intro to all my offerings pretty much yeah i love that and and talking about the soul truth and i guess that's what i was trying to get to that that kind of stuff and and really helping people is this what you like it's obviously a big passion of yours because you know how many people are, are absolutely struggling out there, whether they like to admit it or not, um, because they just think this it's the norm. But um, it's funny how if you're not happy or you're struggling with different stuff, um, it's funny how our brain will still trip us into do what we've always done because we're, the nervous system or the mind or the brain is addicted to those feelings of uh, whether it's guilt, anxiety, Whatever Shame. it may be, stress. It's just it's it's still a familiar. So it's not easy for people to actually go within and change to the unfamiliar, even though they accept. Uh, sorry, even though we know me and you and other people that might have done similar stuff, accept that it's gonna be your soul truth or your actual path to happiness and contentment. And that's all you want in life. I thought, fuck me, who gives a fuck? You don't leave your um. I tell you what, we don't take our fucking possessions with us. You just want to be happy uh, every day. You, you got, got every single minute. We want to be doing our very best to at least breathe and be content. But the breathwork stuff we'll get to, and we love that stuff. So is this is this a major part of your coach? I know it's all different, and you get different horses for courses and and all that kind of stuff. What more than one way to skin a cat with your clients? But yeah. a big part of what you, I guess, you coach. Yeah. So a big. I mean, a, a big. A big part of my my daily life is is doing like I guess life coaching type of stuff and and it's not really life coaching because you know what I'm just as messed up as the next person but I've got I've got incredible tools that I've learned over my journey from different mentors that can really help you step into that ultimate truth that we're all here to experience you know and 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 I'd rather live that truth now then realize at the end of my life you know how old i'm going to be that in my last 10 breaths i have that aha moment that this is how i should have lived my life and why do i live it based on all the shit that i was scared of or comparing myself to other people or whatever else so so ultimately yeah the, the life coaching is a is a huge part of what i do and i do that I do one-on-one -on -one with some people and then I do groups and I also do, you know, going to corporates and work with different teams and sales teams and marketing teams and whatever. But, and ultimately what I, what I love doing is, is bringing people back into self-responsibility and, and much deeper connections. And so once we have the, the, uh, what's the word, the, when we allow ourselves to, to live in that space and, and to be, to, 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 we give ourselves permission to connect, then everything just, it just seems so much easier. Mm -hmm. And, and, and we come into our soul truth. And yeah, sometimes the we, we make things complicated or hard for the sake of it. And 
I'm going to ask you an off the cuff question in a minute about what um, if people are in a bit of a rut and struggling, or or just think it's normal to always feel like feel like anxious or having to prove themselves or caring what people think or wanting to like, beat the Joneses down the road or or always wanting to achieve for other people and let, uh, we'll use sport like, always wanting to perform so other people fucking say something like. Oh, that's bullshit, by the way. But I'm going to ask Tommy, if you're in that zone right now, my, my signal's a bit ripped, I've just noticed. If you're in that zone right now, um, Tommy, what's three or four things that people regularly do in life? And this is seven billion, it's eight billion on the earth. Three or four things that if they're not happy, to stop right now. <laughs> well, I mean, look, we, the body is an incredible mechanism you know it's it's an incredible our as in our physical body and i look at the physical body as almost that i'm in charge of it and if my mind is wandering everywhere and i'm disconnected and i feel like shit i will literally look at my physical body and go right mofo i'm going to use you right now like a slave to bring me back to connection right because the physical body is a uh, it's it, it's just the experience we're having through this body, right? So I look at my body and go, "Hey, body, I'm going to use you for the next five or ten minutes to bring you bring me back to center, to bring my mind, my spirit back into connection, right?" And then you can do that's the thing in one minute you can do. There's so many things you can do. So you know, for example. If I'm, if I'm feeling like shit, one of the things I, one, just a really simple one is literally stand up and start slapping yourself all over, right? It's this qigong thing where um, it's called body, body tapping and you live, but I don't tap. I punch myself up. Like I get into the kidneys, the chest, like a full gorilla and the mo you, you do that for 20 seconds and you're like, holy shit, I'm fucking alive. Like, how good's this? And then your, your body and mind are reconnected. But, oh, sorry. Uh, well, yeah, body, mind, reconnection, but also mind and spirit connection. And when those three are aligned, that's when you're in full creativity. So there's things like that. There's obviously yoga, but that's like an hour. A lot of people are like, oh, can't do yoga. So the, the, the little things, you know, cold showers, cold water therapy, Another great one is breath work. It's not hard to pull up on YouTube, just put in the search box, mm -hmm. breath work. I mean, there's a guy, um, for anyone looking for any sort of breathing, um, to, there's an epic guy who, I've, who I've, I've been doing his breath work on YouTube. Um, his name is Breathe With Sandy. And all his breath work stuff is unbelievable. Like, And it's hard to find people you connect with because – especially with breath work, yoga, all that type of stuff. Cause a lot of them have this annoying voice and they're like, yeah, get into the third eye chakra. It's like, fuck off. I just want to feel good, you know? Um, and this guy breathe with Sandy is he's, he's connectable. Like you connect to him. He's just a real dude. And he like, he's just, he's got these 10, 15 minute breathing exercises and they send you into oblivion and back and you're just connected. And that's I'll just I'll just pause you there. Brilliant. I've just finished James Nestor's breath uh book called Breathe. There Breathe. you go. Um very, 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 very good. James Nestor. Great book. Um, I love all that shit. And number one, number two, the thing you said about the condensed stuff, we, we preach it all the time. Uh one of our things is breakfast before breakfast, even two minutes of, of moving anything. It doesn't have to be. Um, I've got a footy next to me. You could do fucking you could do 15 ground balls against the wall. Just yeah. to get yourself doing something, okay? Not just like obviously running or riding for for our um, athletes or Tommy's yoga. Tommy's actually on our app, 10, 12 videos. He's got brilliant fifteen minute yoga practices. Mm. Fifteen minutes. It's a brilliant entree and intro to to the person who might not know um, the beautiful practice of yoga. Um, awesome. Is there anything people you think are doing too much of? from a mental state or let's not go with um, band-aid effects because that they're like the other yeah. stuff like eating, drugs, alcohol, okay, that's all yeah. band-aid. But people like, like comparisons and these kind of things, like yeah. I think you have to, but just fucking stop. 
Yeah, hundred percent. Even with yoga, breath work, meditators, whatever, you can always take things to a little bit too far, and you can go into these practices with the totally wrong mindset. Perfect example, you know, I teach a couple of breath work classes throughout the week, and uh, had a dude in there last week, and you could tell he was like this intense guy. He's, coming in is like right let's fucking do breath work fucking rah, rah. and he anyway he lies down and the the breath work there's a it's a really intricate um if you do it properly you can really like have altered states of consciousness but this guy went next level he's like, like so the breathing like especially the wim hof stuff you it's like you take a big breath in and then just let the breath go so you're just like <sighs> It's just a big breath in and then you let it go. But this guy was going <laughs> like he was bloody going for it. Right. And so he totally, instead of oxygenating the body, he did the opposite. He got, he, all the oxygen was gone out of the body, right? Cause he was just huffing and puffing and carrying on and he ended up blacking out. And there's this thing in, in breath work that's where, people can lock out and they get blue lips and all this type of stuff. Anyway, this guy's in my class. He's got the full T-Rex arms. He's like lips are Fuck. blue. He's fucking gone. Right. And because I've luckily I've seen this happen before in, in classes. So I knew what to do and to bring him back. But man, it's like, what did you do? Tell me? Well, you, you basically go up to when they're on the floor, you go up, you put your hand on their chest and you squeeze their um you squeeze their traps really hard and it just brings them straight back and just you know you just like wiggle their chest and just like you know you say their name it's like dude come back come back you're all good no stress anyway he comes back and he's like whoa that was fucking awesome i'm like dude no that's not awesome (laughs) like this is not what it's about what did he say in that in that little period oh he went off he was like colors all sorts of shit going on but that's not the that's not the way to get yourself there you know you can take yourself there to alter the state of consciousness but it can't be forced because it's not a even though breath work can be forced but you've got to learn how to do it properly same thing with yoga it's like when you dive into a yoga practice you can fuck your knees you can fuck your shoulders you can fuck your back you can get as many injuries in yoga Mm. as you do in footy or running or or whatever. So the idea is to learn how to engage and not rush into it, you know, not to squeeze things into place. And, and that's why yoga is such an incredible practice because you learn the more you practice, you start to learn with your body. It's like, Hey, you know what, why try and squeeze things into places where they don't belong? And it's exactly the same thing as life. Because in yoga, if you're forcing it, you, you're either going to fuck something, like bust something or bust a hammy or whatever, or you, you're just not going to enjoy yourself. If you go into a shape and you let the breath get you into the shape and you open up and you just, you, you're opening from surrender, not from force. Oh man, fucking goosebumps of how incredible that feeling is and it's the same thing in life it's like when you're forcing something why force it it's obviously not meant to be there if you're forcing it you're pushing and pulling and trying to get manipulating other people and trying to get this person here and there and uh, it's like whoa man just fucking stop like and, and and once you stop then you can observe the most obvious thing and and that's the hilarious the hilarious thing about what I find in my life. It's it's always the most obvious thing that seems like a no brainer is the answer. It's what? it's ninety nine percent of the time we search we search it's like oh what about and it's right in front of our face and the most obvious might be break up from the relation. The most obvious center might be go and take two weeks off for yourself and spend time on your own. The most obvious answer might be going, you know, doubling down onto the business, even if that, if that's going to financially, um, you know, stress you out. Like the obvious thing, 
I don't know, with your kids, like hugging your kids, hugging your partner. The obvious thing is all easy or it's too like, well, can't that surely that can't be the answer. It is the answer. <laughs> yep. You know, we're trying to force often it's a tough way to live. We have all been there, we've all done it, we've all thought that um trying to squeeze round pegs through square holes and the like. It's a very tough way to live. Stop it. Like Tommy and our journey is very similar and our message is about trying to help people just live the most energetic, happy, productive lives they can. You mentioned money 20 minutes ago, and I've said for a long time that vitality, happiness, and energy are the only true currency there is. Um, and obviously from vitality, happiness, and energy comes brilliant memories and the like, and memories are amazing. And But the happiness, the vitality, and the energy is perfect. Why are we waiting um, till we make five million bucks or get that house or, or, or get that promotion? We're waiting for that to be happy. That's rubbish. We're happy. You should be happy right now because every day is a fucking privilege. Today, I've got a wristband that says, runners, what a day to be alive. Like that mm. Today is a great day to be alive, Tommy K, because fuck me, it could, it could easily be the opposite. So, Yeah. Uh, and there's there's actually a, a, a saying that the, the American Indians have, which I always remind myself, which is actually the opposite of that, which is today's a great day to die. That's how they... The American Indians back in the day, that was their greeting. It's like, hey, man, today's a great day to die. And the reason they say that is to live today like today is your last. Brilliant. Yeah. So it's like, I mean, obviously, it's a great day to be alive. Fucking oath it is. But, you know, today's a great day to die is also, yeah. it's, it's, this, it's this feeling of like, do you know what? If I die today, I'm going to live every like imagine if you knew you were going to die this evening you if you knew that was happening you would experience every breath every piece of wind on you you would experience all of it you know and you'd be almost like um this just this infinite awareness experiencing everything that there is to experience Green anyway, way to put it we we probably and again listen to this show hopefully write some notes and remind yourself and book in with different uh, in your calendar to do five minutes of mindfulness and slow down. And even the youth athletes I work with, I try to put in their diaries, mindfulness, slow down, because it, it, if you do it from a young age, it does become um, really, really habitual. But um, don't forget it. Like, it's so easy to go back to your yeah, to-do list and forget everything Tommy said. Um, the man... He's not just a heartthrob. He's not just a rock star. He's, he's a genius. Um, tell me something. Now, you obviously, you've done it all. If anyone wants to listen, they go back to our previous episode a few years back with him. He gave us a, he's been a rock star, been in Hollywood 15 yeah. years, party with Slash and all those guys. But is there anyone on your podcast, Tommy can be unfiltered, of course, uh, one yeah. of the great things on Apple and Spotify. Um, is there anything, uh, is there any guests or anything that stood out um, for example, what you just said has been brilliant. And we've spoken mm -hmm. a lot, but it will definitely would have been an aha moment for hopefully many of our listeners. Is there anything that's still going to go, fuck, this guest is like, different or something that's just come out yeah, of nowhere? Like these I, questions I, are out of nowhere. So I, yeah. I commend you. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I, recently I had, a couple of months ago, I had the um, this Olympic um, freestyle, snow freestyle skier, Lydia Lassala, who... I had on um, a couple of months ago, I think maybe 10 episodes back or something. And uh, she was great to chat to because she's so down to earth and she, she just had a, has a really fucking cool message. And it was really, it was really nice to, to chat to her and, and we connected really well. So um, yeah, I, I, that, that's a really good episode. Um, depending on sort of what I've got all sorts of guests on i've had guests on that have you know been in the trenches of drug fuel like years and years of drug and alcohol you know then waking up in the back of a supermarket pretty much that was the day that was going to be the end and they pulled themselves out of it another great story yeah i mean i most of the guests i get on i'm i'm pretty uh 
they've got a they've got a really really cool story um you know so yeah i mean yeah i have a good mixture on there where it's sometimes me just yapping on about telling you how to fucking live your life when i'm just as fucked up as the next person and uh and other ones i, I get guests on who have got really cool stories we've all got our issues big fella but uh, yeah i think at least you're very aware you're very aware and you do have your day in place and we speak i want to speak about that in two secs but um my routine um per each day if i don't get it done um i don't know talk about me today but the, if that routine has to go through and then everything else flows um and i just try to keep my uh, mental health as paramount and physical health as paramount so i can be the best father husband um obviously business operator coach that I could be. Tell me about a day in the life of T Kim. T Dog. The big so, the big T Dog. The big T Dog. <laughs> so I have my <laughs> musts every day. Uh some sort of movement, definitely. So whether that be yoga, the last um last year, 12 months I've been I'll probably do like maybe four or five good juicy yoga practices every week. Um, and then I'll do like two or three, just, I just walk. I just either put on a podcast or put on, like I've been, I've been making these incredibly cool, funky tunes, like old school acid jazz, like funky tunes with epic bass lines. And I've just been hooking into the beat and just walking my ass off. So do a, probably do two or three, like six to 10 K walks every week. You wouldn't fuck um, around either. You'd be, you'd be race walking around. If I know Tommy, like, if I know Tommy the way I think I know him, he'd put these beats on and you'd see him race walk and it'd be like James Seville from the 2000 Olympics just fucking race Oh, walking. totally. Mate, I've got the drum beats going on the whole way. I'm like rocking it. You know, I'm playing bass and whatever. Walking, walking past triathletes doing sprints out there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that, so my musts for the, for my days is some sort of movement, definitely breath work, some type of breath work, even if it's a, a chilled breath work, like alternate, alternate nostril breathing, or I do some intense hyperventilative type breath work, like, you know, the Wim Hof stuff or even more advanced stuff. So I do that some type of breath work every, every single day. And then there always has to be every day, something that fucking puts me out of my comfort zone whether it's a, a conversation, whether it's a phone call, whether it's standing my ground, you know, me and my, me and my fiance, we're so fucking different. We love each other to the, the nth degree, but she's a lawyer, you know, I'm up all in the heavens and I'm, you know, up with the gods doing yoga and mindfulness stuff. And, and we're, we're very different. So I've, I've really learned um, on, on many levels how to, how to stay in the fire, you know, in, in conflict. And, and I've, I've, I'm really proud of myself because I spent pretty much most of my life running from conflict and avoiding it. Um, but being with, with a lawyer and being in love with a lawyer, you have to learn how to, how to stand your ground in conflict. So um, every day, whether it's with her or whether it's, um, you know, just in life, just somehow put myself out of my comfort zone that place that makes me go, oh, fuck, where's this going to go? I have to do that at least once a day. Love that. Um, yeah. Common for people, but not daily. You really, you're you not Robinson Caruso, by the way. Like, everyone hates conflict. <laughs> I think everyone hates conflict. Fuck it. But you, I don't know about that. Oh, oh, some yeah. people, maybe, but I'll, most people I hang around hate conflict. And you are, like, you, you're living with a lawyer now, but you've made yourself, you've pushed yourself out of out of that zone. It, it, I hate it. Everyone hates it. But to yeah. be able to do those kind of conversations, have those conversations daily is pretty impressive. Cold water, you mentioned Wim Hof. I know you love a bit of cold water. Um, I love. That's another that, one. That's another daily. So, so that's daily. Now, is yeah. it Port? We, we live on the beautiful Port Phillip Bay, me and the TK. But yeah. you, you're obviously cold shower, ice bath, Port Phillip Bay operator. What what would be yeah. your go-to out of those? So, any, I mean, obviously it's summer right now. So the bay is, is like, you know, 19, 20 degrees or whatever. That's, so that's not yeah, way too warm. So I I either do uh, daily cold showers. Yep. 
or at least three times a week, I'll do a one to four degree ice bath. Okay. So yeah. just sorry to buddy. So tell me about the, you've got a bit of Hoff breath, breath work. So there could yeah. be this is going, who the fuck is Wim Hof? You don't have to talk about him too much, but mm. just tell me about your routine uh, about to get in the ice because it never gets easier. It's like, it's yeah. like anything. Like, it's not as if yeah. Tommy wakes up and goes, cannot wait to get in that one degree. I just fucking, I'm pumped. But Never. tell me about this and tell me about your, your lead up to getting in, because I reckon this can help a lot of people. Right? You lead up to getting in when you're in and then post. Yeah. So, I mean, I lead breath work and ice bath sessions. And really the, the idea is you do the breath work, you oxygenate the body, you get the body pumping. And once you've done, you know, that 20, 30 minute breath work session, then after that you get straight into ice cold water. Um, and in terms of the process of getting into ice cold water, look, some people just like to put their feet in and just go, all right, I'm going to take a few breaths and then jump in and whatever, which is fine. As long as you get in, it's totally fine. But the idea is the way to look at it is just like, even though it's going to hurt, be excited about getting in, right? Because you know that ultimately, if you've done it a few times, you know that there's never, ever a time when you leave an ice bath session and you feel like shit, you literally want to punch on with the world. It's like, fuck yeah, let's go, <laughs> let's party. You know, so I just look forward to that after that five minutes or 11 minutes or however long I stay in there. I look for that moment when I come out and I've got this surge of energy running through me, you want it to take shit on. And that's, that's, that's what I look forward to. So that's why I do it. Because one, I know that, ice baths put the body into good stress it puts the body into good resistance and good tension because it forces all your organs all your muscles all the bones all the cells it forces them to turn on and drive themselves to the areas that need healing yeah and that, that's how adaptation occurs listeners like it's a it is a good physical stress it is a good stress and it, it, if, yeah. if what what Tommy's describing there, um, all that physiology then goes uh, crossed. He's going to make me do this again in 24, 36 hours. So yeah. it has to adapt and get stronger. And hence the immune system adaptations and all this kind of stuff as well. Um, there's a lot of science out there and I'm not the expert on it, but there is a lot of good science. TK, um, when you're in there for 10, 11 minutes or so, tell us about your breathing while you're in there does it go from the fast in inhales exhales to the to the slow do you do, do you do yeah you get to the yep. point where you can do box breathing and slow breathing yeah. how does it so all you, evolve yeah so once you're in there obviously it's going to be quick breath because your body's trying to protect itself your mind is trying to protect itself so you're going <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, fuck, fuck. You're like, that's going to be the start of it. Genuine Most, stinging. Unless, Gen you, unless you... Yeah, Haley has inside. gone inside of you. Yeah. Um, and then after that's done, you just go, okay, you do that a few times. And then it's just like deep breath in through the nose and out the mouth. Big breath in through the nose and out the mouth. And just tell yourself, it's okay. It's okay. Just feel, just experience we're all good. We're not going to die. I even sometimes say ego, like I talk to my ego. I know you're trying to protect me, but I'm safe. I'm okay. All I'm doing is just breathing and that's all I'm doing, you know, and then you're in and then you're just experiencing and there'll be these little moments where you want to get out, but you don't, you stay and just keep breathing, you know, and I mean, you want to be mindful. I mean, if that, if that, if you start shivering in a cold, cold plunge, time to get out, um, whatever you're doing. So if you start shivering, your body's like, nah, we need to take this a little bit slower. So less time. Um, or if you start, you know, things start closing. There was a guy that came the other day and he's like, mate, that was like being in a K-hole. <laughs> you know, like yeah, he, he's obviously done like ketamine and stuff yeah. in the past. Not the effect, not the effect we're after. No, but so when th if things start closing in, um, you know, obviously then get out. So there's certain things you can do. And, and this stuff is all great, but you want to, you can't, it's not about shocking the body. So someone that's been doing ice baths for 10 years, they're just going to get in and breathe totally comfortably. If it's 
your first time, you know, there's so many places around Melbourne now that offer these um, ice bath places. You know, there's a place called uh, Inner Studios, which is unbelievable. Such a cool space. They're in uh, Collingwood or North, no, Collingwood. Inner Studios, a couple of AFL footy players own it. They're really good guys. So if you're looking to go to a good place, Inner Studios in Collingwood is fucking epic. They've got cold plunge, warm plunge, and a sauna, and it's just a great bunch of people. So, um, yeah, they're there. They're, uh, but, yeah, you've got cold plunge all over. And you know what? Even the ocean, like just jump in the ocean, but just keep jumping in the ocean. Don't just go when it's warm. Go in there when, you know, middle of winter, when it's like hailing and eight degrees outside. Be that person that's on the beach jumping in the ocean with people walking past sitting in their cars going, look at this idiot. And, and, you know, I'll, you just say to those people, mate, I'll see you in 10 years when you look 50 years older than what I do. Now, so, a big message today has been not forcing it and you've carried that right through to the ice as well. But we're, we're, here for, we're here for the benefits. We're not here to prove anything to anyone. Um, we're here to be the best version of ourselves. And that, like you said, I'm going to be able to take on the world in about six minutes. Um, but if you're new to it and you're trying to be a hero and you're trying to stay six minutes and you're, it's your first time, not, not not the right way. Much like we described earlier, trying to force an outcome. Mm. Um, process, journey, love the journey, love the time, love the moment, but don't force an outcome. Yeah, and so with not forcing also another thing that I've realized as well in my own experience, own life as well, is that sometimes not forcing means doing absolutely nothing. Don't be scared about sitting around doing nothing because sometimes doing nothing is the message you're getting from within and be okay with not achieving or, or not because in that moment, if your body's telling you you just need to chill, then listen and chill. Do nothing. It's fine. You know, if you spend a couple of hours sitting there watching Netflix one day, who cares? You know, maybe that's what needs to happen. Or maybe it's a, it's just sitting on the couch and doing nothing and just breathing and having an afternoon nap, whatever it might be. But be okay with doing nothing as well. Really well put, mate, because I think a lot of people carry a lot of guilt and expectation with achievement and there's this preconceived idea that rest is bad when as a as a coach of mostly physical athletes obviously work a lot on mental the old saying good stress like you mentioned before good stress so training strengths or training stress plus rest equals growth and it's the same for production of work or anything else that you're passionate about you do the hard or the deep work we call it the deep work then you have a rest regeneration period without feeling bad about it. Then you go again. You can do that four times within a day. Mm -hmm. um, I don't see the fascination. I've never understood the fascination in calling in, in calling yourself lazy or someone else lazy that fucking has a rest and then gets just as much done in a two-hour period when their body's responded. If your body's telling you no, 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 and you're forcing an outcome, I love that, brother. I'll... Um, Geez, you're a wise man. Like, <laughs> uh, could I wonder if Slash or Axel Rose could have predicted you were talking about this shit in the year 2024? Definitely not. Guarantee you. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. It's, you've lived an amazing life. I want everyone to listen to the first step. We did it in COVID times, I think, but it's really good because um, a bit more, a lot more about Tommy um, growing up and and music and, and touring, and then what what turned his life around to to go in this space and how many thousands of people he's already helped and will continue to help over the next 50 years or so. Um, anyway, what makes Tommy Kendi happy and what are their plans for the leaders of some motivational work? We'll get you back on over the next 12 months. You can yeah, see yeah. Tommy on the app anyway. Me and Tommy will do some work together of some kind as well. For sure. So what makes me happy? Mm. It's, it's always different. Every day is different. You know, so I, I just, I allow, I think what makes me happy is being open, open to, uh, to experiencing whatever comes to me that day, you know, happiness. I mean, look, all the main things like happiness is obviously 
feeling good in the body, connecting, fucking love hugs, you know, connection, um, being in love, having great mates, um, all that stuff, having fucking laughing my head off, like all that shit makes me incredibly happy uh, and having people to, to share that with. And yeah, in terms of the next, next 12 months, my, um, my immediate plan is to really up level, uh, my, my, my messaging in terms of up level it to the amount of people that I share it with. I reckon I've been playing a bit half assed in, in the last couple of years. So this year I really want to do some, um, I, I want to do some big events and collaborate with a, a bunch of different people and do some like big events that, that really transformative events where we get hundreds and hundreds of people down to the events, maybe even thousands. So I've been, um, I've been collab collaborating with this guy that, uh, is a, is a big events guy and we're just putting some, um, putting some ideas together to to get some shit going on so our first event's going to be end of march um so we're just uh formulating that so yeah part of the part of my my whirlwind for 24 is yeah rolling out some big ass events and, and really stepping into to to helping way more people that's a brilliant way to finish i've also in 2024 doing something very similar because for 20 years, we've, me and you, like, we obviously do our thing, but then, yeah, you, you're doing yourself a disservice by not, by just assuming people are going to know you or just assuming. Um, and we, we're going we're gonna to help. We want to help and we want to serve. And, and that that's it. When we do what we do, we need to be putting ourselves out there more. And I love that, brother. Absolutely, absolutely love that. Um, he's a good man, Tommy. That dog, that dog that was on your lap, that's not your yeah. No, I don't know. That's um, it's a friend's dog. Yeah, we are playing with fire. You've got a your but your dog sitting a dog that don't even properly know, and it's on your lap for thirty minutes during a live interview. This is magnificent. That that's called uh, living on the edge. I got my Aussie Shepherd, who's normally the best little mate recording. Was giving me maybe it's a time of day or something. She was no good. I got to get her out, and you brought in <laughs> you brought in a bloody dog sitting dog. That is. That's why we love him. He lives on the edge of the great man. Um, uh, all right, Eddie, give me a one sentence for the listeners before we finish up. One sentence, succinct, everything you've ever learned into help people into seven to eight words. Go. Take, take responsibility for your own happiness and your own experience of life. Perfect. Simple. No one else is going to do it for you. Listen to TK, Tommy Candy. Yeah. He there knows things. Go. He knows a lot of things. <laughs> um, I, I love you, brother. Look forward to oh, doing some speaking and corporate stuff with you. He's a, he's yeah. a machine. Um, anyone that wants a laugh. Now, I, I love yoga. I'm more yin yoga, so meditative, slow, um, real holds. Um, Tommy Kendi got me doing some more vinyasa stuff in, in a few of our app sessions. So anyone that is a member, check that out if you want to laugh. It, oh, mate, it is very <laughs> Again, I wasn't forcing it. I was just letting it flow. You were. Uh, I was know. guided by the very best. So thanks, brother. I appreciate your time. Uh, what a day to be alive indeed. What a late, what a day to die as the age. Yeah, you know it, baby. Indian said, and you've done something, you've listened to something today that's going to make you much better tomorrow.